Hey guys, welcome to Brian's Garage. Um, today I want to share with you how I uh, installed a GM 9.5 inch semi-float 14 bolt in my 1971 Chevy 3 quarter ton pickup. There she is. So you're saying, well, why would you put a 9.5 inch rear end in your truck when it originally came with that guy right there, which is a 10 and an eighth ring gear, full floater. You see this, how this sticks out the end here? That's where the axle is bolted in. And the axle is bolted to this hub. The semi-floater, you don't have that thing sticking out there, see? <clears throat> the reason why I'm going with this is because the uh, truck is a very lightweight truck. You know, it's not that heavy. And I'm not going to be pulling anything crazy with it. Maybe a trailer with a tractor on it once in a while. But that's about it. So I didn't want a real heavy axle in here. Um, I wanted something that was... About the right size for this truck right and that's what we ended up with another thing about this uh this uh, semi-float axle is it's the same width mounting surface to mounting surface as the original axle and you can see my uh, wheel measurement tool goes flange to flange and i got a, another video shows you how to make one of these pretty easy um let's see zoom in there you just subtract off what half inch from whatever you see there, and you can see that it's basically 65 and 3 sixteenths. Well, the original one was 65 and a quarter, the HO52. So, perfect, right? So, what do you get these uh, axles out of? Well, the mid 90s, well, all of the 90s model Chevy pickups, the 2500 series. And I'm only talking about light duty. If they're heavy duty, they'll have the full floater, right? But all of the uh, light duty, will have this nine and a half inch semi-float rear end if they are the drum brake version. The drum brakes on these guys are 13 inches and they are very heavy, very heavy. So I went and put on the later model calipers and the mounting bracket and I used the hoses. Matter of fact, these hoses are the left-hand side. I got left-hand side on both sides. I just flipped it over for over there. You can't really see it very well, but uh, yeah, I use left hand, and for the uh, parking brake cables, I use the left hand side too, and I just shorten them down. And I'll have some videos that'll kind of show you how to do that, but there, there's a factory cable that's been shortened. It fits right up with my uh, factory 71C20. One thing you'll notice is that I've got these calipers on the back side. See, on GM had them on the front, so the uh, emergency brake cables or parking brake cables are shooting out the back, and I shot them forward. Um, of course, I had to uh, cut all the brackets off this, this uh, axle and then weld on these uh, angled um, axle perches and uh, weld on uh, these, these little uh, brackets to hold the, the brake line, or brake hose, rather. Uh, these were actually attached to the backing plates when I got them from the salvage yard, and I just repurposed them and glued them, you know, welded them to the axle. Did have to make this flange here. You see this flange? One side goes up at a 15 degree angle and the other side goes down at a 15 degree angle. That's how GM did it. And that uh, puts your bleed screw at the top so that you can uh, bleed these out okay. Um, this is the light duty uh, 7,200 pound caliper uh, from a 2001 Chevy pickup. Basically this whole swap is either gonna be 2001 or 1971 so that's what i used um i did rebuild the uh the track bar with bushings from um uh, energy suspensions the only guys that make bushings for this the original bushings were vulcanized to the uh to the bosses on the end so uh you can't just press them out right you gotta go with this is the only way you can do it nowadays is just go with this energy suspension uh urethane i did put a little bit of uh Camshaft molybdenum grease mixed with anti-seize between the edge of the bushing and the, and the metal here so it wouldn't squeak. And I drilled and tapped and put uh, fittings in here so we can grease that if need be, right? This is the factory uh, track bar bracket from the HO52. I just chopped this side off because uh, it was going to go over the, uh, the cast iron center section. And then uh, put it all, mocked it all up, put it all in the truck, and with the weight on the jack stands, found out where it was supposed to be, 
pull this front or this this corner of the trailing arm up to this frame right here using ratchet straps until I had it centered and then I and I tack weld everything in place. Um this, ax this axle is a little bit lighter than that HO52. That's nice because uh, less mass you got to push around. You should get better gas mileage too because I went from 410 to 373. That's the problem with the HO52. HO52 is actually a really nice axle. It's just they don't make ring and pinions for it anymore. It's just really hard to get any sort of parts for it without paying an arm or leg and potentially sacrificing quality. Um, I replaced these axles that were in there. Uh, they're actually 31 and I think 13 sixteenths maybe long, but uh, the, they were worn down because unlike a, a full floater, they do carry all the load directly on the axle. The axle acts as the bearing race. And it was kind of buggered up on one and the seal area was buggered up on the other. So I ended up replacing those axles. Let's go up here and look at the, uh, and you can see how all factory very nice and it just comes up here and i used a crimper off of off of uh, amazon to crimp these i pulled these furls out with a torch i just heated them up pulled them out and then cut them to length and then uh, re-crimped them on here with a uh, crimper i got from me or uh, amazon it worked out nice and that ferrule that cable stop is just a, uh, a stainless steel ferrule and uh, i crimped it too with that same crimper it worked out really nice you will have to uh, shorten your drive shaft. The, uh, the pinion snout is longer on this nine and a half than it was on the, the HO52. And uh, so you will have to shorten that drive shaft. Um, let me tell you about the, how to get all this in phase. Your transmission, well mine's shooting downward angle at four degrees and so I put this first drive shaft at the same angle as the transmission. So they're in a line, right? They're all in line. And then all the, uh, the swing down takes place right. Let me see if I can get a better view of this. Swing, the swing down takes place right here. And you see that they've got this joint in line with the uh, trailing arm joints. That's so that when the axle goes up and down and you hit a bump and goes up and down, it's not pushing the drive shaft in and out that way very much. Cause you know, you got your carrier bearing right here, by the way, to get my my axle up here phased with my transmission in the same angle, right? I ended up having to put three quarter inches of shims between the uh, carrier bearing and the mount. But that's gonna be, that thing's gonna be real smooth. It's gonna be nice. Uh, these old nine and a halfs use the same U-joint as the HO52. It's a 1350, so you won't have to change that. This is where they shorten it on this end. It does use these straps, whereas the HO52 had U-bolts. Straps suck, but I'm not looking to do burnouts or anything. This is my truck. I actually use it as a truck. Um, I use the factory H or uh, nine and a half inch vent. It goes up there above that cross member. And I did have to make a new brake brake line back here on the back, and it's. Three, uh, just standard three sixteenths. So this uh, this fitting here is going to be three eighths twenty four. Fits right into the original hose. I, I actually reuse this hose off the salvage car because GM makes good stuff, and most of that replacement aftermarket stuff is not too good. You can see I fed this one here same way, and this is three sixteenths copper nickel with a stainless steel. I just got a kit from Inline Tube. Bends real easy. Bends nice. Here at this uh, distribution block, that's the factory HO52 brass distribution block. You're gonna have to run a fitting to go between the, the 3 sixteenths and step it up to quarter inch. Well, quarter inch tube. It's actually, I think it's 7 sixteenths thread. You can see here's a fitting. Here's a fitting. It's in between the 3 sixteenths tube nut going into the distribution block. And uh, I did put this later model uh, cover on it. The, the 90s covers don't have this fill plug here and I just got one on the side. But uh, anyways, uh, very nice, nice setup. It's got the 13 inch rotors. Those are big rotors, man. And it's got dual pistons, two pistons, see? Yeah. Back there. Dual pistons, two inch piston calipers. So 
you know, nice setup. And it's it's all GM, so it's going to be way better than any aftermarket stuff. Um, I, I don't expect any problems. Now, the uh, factory proportional valve, portioning valve, I, uh, I put gauges in the brake ports in the front and back and then plotted out the split between the front and the rear brake pressure at what point it starts going over in it. It seemed to lay over at about 400 PSI and was almost a, a flat line. I mean, it had a little bit of slope to it, but pretty, pretty flat. And uh, doing, putting the numbers together and everything, that's gonna work out to be about a 70% uh, a brake bias on the front and 30% uh, on the back. I was shooting for 25 in the back and 75 on the front. But you know, this probably isn't that bad. So uh, anyway, that's, uh, that's the short and sweet version of how to do that. In reality, it takes a really long time and uh, quite a lot of effort. I've, I've spent, I don't know, a uh, couple months on the weekends putting this all together. You're gonna need a uh, at least a 180 amp welder to weld that uh, that disc brake bracket to the 3 8 tube axle because the disc brake bracket's half inch. So you're gonna need to really burn that in. I did it with three passes. The, uh, the little perches there, they're easy enough to weld in. They're just 3 16 no big deal. Um, but uh, this big one back here, that guy, you see that weld? That takes some. Uh, that takes a pretty good size welder, and uh, I just barely felt like I was penetrating enough. And then, like I said, I put three welds on it. Uh, don't forget to change out your uh, pencil gear way up there in your transmission. I have a 4L80 that has been converted to run a mechanical speedometer. Um, I have to reprogram my uh, 4L80 transmission controller uh, to the new gear ratio 373 i expect this will probably improve my uh my online or online on the highway uh, gas mileage from 17 to 18 miles per gallon at 65 and i get about 16 current well i used to get about 16 at 85 and i expect that to be about 17 now anyway pretty cool swap it's the right uh it's the right width. It's a lot of work. You're not going to do it in the weekend. But the uh, the results are really nice, and it's all GM. It should be very reliable. And as far as I know, I'm the only guy in the world that's done it this way with the calipers on the back. I haven't seen anybody else do this swap, so uh, maybe this will encourage some other people to follow along with what I did here because I think it's going to be a winner. That's it for Brian's Garage. Uh, I'll try to put out, put out some uh, videos showing more detail about how I did this because I did take some videos during the process and uh, we'll throw those up there eventually. But for now, that's that's your cliff notes. Yeah, that's it for Brian's Garage. We'll talk to you later.